We now You're move welcome, to Katrin. another interesting element of today's session, a panel discussion with some young entrepreneurs, effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, mitigation strategies. And I'm pleased to invite Ken Sambury, founder of EE Empire. Ken was with us yesterday. Shari Pierre, owner of Love the Poor. I love that. Shari has to tell us about that. Daniel Francis, author and entrepreneur. Anson Savrel, music producer. Anson is also Nina Blackman's manager. And Ayn Earl, founder of the Fashion Arc. Folks, a warm welcome. Hello. Oh, Good morning. Hi, Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you morning. again. So let's morning. get right into it. So I'm going morning, to ask morning. each. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask each of you to give the audience a brief introduction of you and your business, so they can have some context of who you are, and then we get straight into it. So, Anson, I'm jumping straight at you to start going. Who is Anson? What does Anson do? Um, I am Anson Sovereign, also known as Anson Pro, which is short for Anson Productions, as a lot of my name I know. But um, <laughs> I'm a music producer and uh, an entrepreneur and a businessman. Uh, my background is actually in electrical electronics with um, instrumentation and engineering. Um, I have been producing for over... 20 something odd years basically since primary school and I also came from the oil and gas industry uh, many years ago I'm not that old but I've been around I worked in all of the process utility companies like TN Tech, Wasa, Petrotrin so I have a, a pretty good background within that scope and now within recent times I've made my living and my name in the entertainment sector with music and events and some other things that I'll get into more as this discussion goes on. Great. Thank you, Anson. Let me bring Ayn in to talk about Ayn and her business, the fashion arc. Hi, good morning all and thank you for having me. Um, as the name says, the fashion arc, we actually work with fashion designers and creators in terms of assisting with branding and marketing for their businesses, helping them really push their business forward, assisting with business operations. And of course, as Latin creators create, as most of them are solopreneurs, they sometimes need that extra push and also the business support behind the scenes. So we kind of help them with that. I've been doing this about five years now, four years full time. So that's a short synopsis of what I am. My background is in tourism, marketing and hospitality. But because of what I see fashion and the creative industry being, is also kind of intertwined with the tourism sector as well. Great, and we'll get, we'll get into that later on. The author and entrepreneur in our midst, Daniel. Hi, yes, so my name is Daniel Francis. Uh, I am a first-time author of a book called The Millennial Mind. I'm before the book, and currently I'm still a personal development coach. Funny enough, I did biology and pre-med and all these things, and I was going to be able to... Daniel, for some reason, we're not hearing you. Your audio is low. Can you hear me now? Yes, better. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I was saying, um, funny enough, I actually did biology and was prepared to be a doctor. And then life hit me a curveball and I realized I did not want to be a doctor anymore. And that just left into a very long spiral of doing nothing and kind of stumbling upon personal development and helping people with their self their, their self help and personal development. And yeah, through the work of... You went low again. I went low again. Come closer to the phone. Oh, I'm on my laptop right now. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, let's talk yes. into it. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, but basically I was saying that I'm a personal development coach and through helping persons through consultations and all these different things, I came up with the concept for my self-help book, The Millennial Mind, that launched earlier this year and has been very successful and is actually kind of pushing me to create a business around the books educating persons on books and even writing more books and more or less becoming an entrepreneur author. And I also do through events with Ken as well on Empire Funny Enough. Small world. Shadi, love the poor. Hello. Good afternoon. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me. 
Uh, well, my name is Charlie Pierre. I'm a professional mixologist, but also a beverage service provider. And yes, the word love the pour means signature long pour, which you said you love. <laughs> so it's a signature cocktail. I do menus as well, but also I'm a seaman. So I work offshore as well, doing um, celebrity yachts, uh, as well as in um, special events. I do service staff provider for hotels and weddings, functions, uh, catering companies, as well as training staff. Also, I'm a marketing strategist as I do promotional marketing um, applications for uh, various companies and structure menus for restaurants and hotels. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. <laughs> Ken. All right. Um, so my background actually is in communications and business development and innovation. So I went to Costat initially. I actually started IT and I dropped out because I couldn't deal with all of the programming. And after doing communications, I went to the Arthur Jack Graduate School of Business. So I did um, a master's in business development and innovation. Um, my background includes working in advertising and also working as a brand manager at Brydens. Um, so I think that kind of led me to, well, do events. And also while doing my master's, I picked up videography and I started to shoot people's weddings and I developed an entire company around that, which I will share more about later today. Great, so we're getting deeper into it. So let me bring Ayn in first to talk about the pandemic and what effects it had on your business. I know Ayn, you're also a beneficiary of the Share Like Wire program. So we can also bring that into the conversation, which I'm sure would have helped you in terms of pivoting. And so let's talk. Yeah, um, so actually the Shout Live Wire kind of pushed me forward that program I felt in terms of an idea that I would have had from before because I work with the fashion designers. I am not a designer myself, even though a lot of people think that that's what we do. But um, I was actually able, hoping again because I saw I was an unstable for a bit, was actually able to start a clothing line working with um, some of the pro local producers currently. So other designers are now producing pieces for me especially as you see, we're on a webinar right now. So I actually created a clothing that is considered webinar wear. So it's easy pieces that you can just throw on. It's well, more for females, of course. Just throw on so you look presentable enough to be online, but then you still can be comfortable at home. Like, so this piece that I'm wearing now is one of these pieces. So it's something that I have to kind of transition from not just creating, a, providing a service, but also implementing products as well too. Um, I would have done a lot of physical and in-person events before. Some of these had to be transitioned to online. So we're now doing virtual pop-ups, finding ways to, of course, still ensure that my clients and other vendors were able to present themselves to customers that may not be able to see them every day. They may not have their own space. Some of my vendors as well, too, may have had to close their stores because of rent and different things, too. So actually being able to do these online pop-ups, they've been seeing an increase in sales and increase in customer acquisition, and of course, just more following or even on social media. Um, another thing that would have happened outside of the full branding aspect that I would have been doing, I had to switch some of my services as well too. So it became more social media content, assisting with web development, making sure that the customers were now online because most everybody is on their phone, on a tablet, somewhere scrolling through somewhere. They weren't able to meet person anymore physically. So I had to find ways to make ensure that all of my customers were online in some form or fashion. And the Live Wire program really did help with that, at least pushing me forward to start at least the physical side, the product side of my business. Yes, and later we've talked about that in terms of mitigation and, and, and how you know the kind of strategies you use to treat with that. And son, how how unkind was COVID to your business? Um, well, I, I would like to think that we got hit the hardest. Um, we got hit first and we would probably be last to recover. So COVID was not very kind, but it's all about what you make of it. Um, I think what COVID did was it allowed for a lot of creative discussions to happen and a lot of people to just find better ways to do things or find alternative sources of income. So for me, um, what, what I've been focusing more on has been, uh, I've been focusing more on the influencer side of things because I realized, well, two things happened during COVID that, that kind of stood out for me. One was mainstream media was hit very hard. 
and with that mainstream media, you find that there was a lot of companies trying to reach into the homes now to get their messages across as, a, as opposed to in the past where, you know, just in transit or being in the vehicle, you're listening to radio, you know, just that routine of waking up early to go to work, you'll turn on the morning news, local news, but now you're home. So everybody's schedule is just different. It's just shifted. So I thought, okay, how do we, how do I provide a service to help corporate in particular reach inside of the homes to capture and still deliver their messages? So that was one of the things that I kind of have put a lot of focus on during COVID. As well as me being a music producer, I had a lot of free time to produce music. So, you know, music for me was my avenue of not necessarily being as affected as most people because I've built up over the years uh, or generated a lot of what you call digital streaming revenue. So in a sense, my digital streams would have gone up significantly because now everybody's home streaming. So from a, from a digital side, it's been pretty good. But from an event aspect, of course, that hit, hit us very hard. So it's just a matter of supplementing that with, with other business ideas and strategies which I've been coming up with. Shade, you know, um, the COVID would have brought out, brought out all the creative stops in us. Um, what happened with your business? Given that you have multiple streams, you have multiple income streams based on what you shared. So yes. tell us. But the thing with me, actually, with COVID uh, and the pandemic, actually, um, it triples down because I provide service staff. So from anything from bartenders to wait staff to any inquiry staff that needed for hotels, subcontracted, um, it was cancelled. Um, so no banquet, no the weddings, the, the function, the occasions were literally drastically to end for a period of all the months, as well as um, the borders were closed. So all these sea ferries, anything we do from the the celebrity um, boats we have outside, like a, um, a yacht, I usually do and teal staff with. Um, it's we are literally um, they're anchored in Shagarama, so we can't really move as flowy as we usually do and offer um, um, the services that we wanted to. And basically, the menu structure too, as well, was um, I cut down a little bit more than anything else, right? So basically, it was very difficult because for me, I will find ways to still try to. Um, provide solely but the persons who actually look to me for service it actually affected them more from mothers to parents that um persons who have literally accustomed being able to get something on the weekends itself to it really drastically hurt them um financially and you know you would try your best to try to um, support them so even though now i try what i did was try to do like a little fundraisers in between the hampers as well in between of those who need it the most as well financially and then well me personally as well too i structure myself and the business itself too for menus and drink for solely individuals so from the private dinner or from the private wedding and stuff to I'll do drinks packages, many packages, be able to, and I use the social media, the platform, because you're home, so visually you're gonna be on a TV or at a social media platform, so why not I use that element to actually structure and showcase and just be innovative as much as possible and try to um, accommodate every individual person. So what I did is listen and I listened by watching everybody, what they were doing and stuff too, and structure what I can actually offer them to, um, so they will be able to provide a service still from the pickup from service as well from restaurants and catering from chefs. I did that all as well to me because I got staff members still to work, but for curbside or for delivery, things like that. So I try to uh, associate and try to accommodate as much as personal as possible because the thing is the companies are really about that experience and events as Mr. Anderson said so you know we, we cut down on that but we still try to get that uh, you know sparkle that the uh, love the poor kind of issue in still and you know try to keep on to our loyal customers as well as our guests in every um, criteria possible. You have any creativity coming out very very strong. Danielle tell us when COVID came to you, what you told it? What, what, what kind of conversation you had with COVID? 
Unmute your mic. You want to bring in Daniel? Yes, everybody hear me now? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So COVID completely hit me for sex. Uh, before anything happened with the book, I was a, I'm a coach. So all my consultations, my webinars, all these things that were set annually that would just keep recurring, basically stopped because you can have gatherings, people can meet in person. And um, the idea of doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation via Zoom and webinar and virtually at the beginning was people didn't want to hear that. They, they wanted that face-to-face -face interaction. So the conversation was, well, we'll see how COVID goes but we all know how it is going right now and we've been forced to pivot into the virtual sphere. Um, COVID was more or less a blessing kind of in disguise for me because in 2019, I came up with the concept for my book. I wrote it and I started to get the gears turning towards launching it in April of 2020. I was heavily invested as in everything was put into the book launch and the success of the book. And interestingly enough, the book launched on April 15th, which was actually my birthday. And the, the physical launch event was supposed to happen on that day. And that was about two weeks prior, the government said, everything is on lockdown, I think from that date. Or it was supposed to end that day or somewhere around that time. But basically what it did was it threw everything off for me. You know, I had paid for a venue. I had paid for physical structure. I had paid for, for certain things to happen in the physical event that now could not happen. Um, so I basically was put in a position where I had less funds to put towards it. Um, I had to completely change my plan and it basically put me flat on my back for a while. Um, luckily for me, the way I do things is I, I really leverage the, the expertise of other persons. And it's funny that I had two persons within this whole panel that helped me towards that end. You know, I, I, I had to pivot my launch to a virtual launch. So it was a virtual book launch, Trini style. And I, I held it in Ken's studio uh, with his assistance and his equipment. I even spoke to Anson about having Nyla join into the launch um, via joint live on the Instagram. Um, when I approached him about it, he said, this is nothing we've ever done before. So that was having to figure out what this new would look like. Um, but honestly, it, it, it ended up being very successful uh, no one thought they would have as many people who tuned into that live as we did. And basically since that point, the book was just on a high that maintained. And, and of course, there was a lot of pivoting that had to be done because you're speaking about people being home, right? So I, I could not see people in, in person to say, hey, you know, this is my book. It was all done over social media. There was even a point where, you know, it was set up in a way where you could order the book online and pick it up. But the act of picking up the book became an issue because the government said, stay home, <laughs> right? So that pivoted into me having to do deliveries, getting drivers, changing the system and finding new and, and innovative ways to reach people because I had no choice. I, this was the only source of income that I had. And it, it basically forced me to, to give it my all. And, you know, yes, everything else was more or less cut off and I had to figure everything out on the fly but you know i'm happy to say that you know i've sold a thousand books so far uh, which is not really common for authors especially if you're launching a book in a pandemic um but it really is in the strength of the people who are on my team and me not saying that i will sit down based upon what was happening in the environment i want to talk about your continuity plan in a bit but let me bring ken in i know ken yes um yesterday you shared a bit on, on your journey um, but now you're on the other side talking about your COVID experience. Yeah. So, I mean, today I'm actually going to talk about two uh, different companies and different experiences. And I think, first of all, the presentation before the panel discussion started was on investment. And I think I made investments for other reasons, but then I was able to use it for my benefit. And I'll explain. So I actually, along with Anson, we together would have managed another artist, Second Star. And to kind of assist with his like uh, media, I would have set up a studio in um, my office space, basically. Um, so this studio would have been where, you know, he could come in and do his jobs. I would have also um, done ads for my own event outfit. So what happened is COVID hit. I had this studio here and I just started calling people and telling them, you know, I have this studio here, come and use it. 
And since then, people have come consistently and use this use the studio space now. So I felt like that's something that before COVID time I took for granted. But because uh, now I was kind of in this space in this situation where everybody wanted to do something live, everybody wanted a space, but then you know you can't really go in your regular spaces. I felt as though that was an investment that I made before that was able to pay off for me later on. Another investment I made. So when I would have events. I would buy these giant games. So I, I would get like a big game made so that people could play in events. And then for my own team, for our team building activities, I would buy different smaller games that we could play when we come together as a team. But then COVID came and everybody was home. Everybody was also not wanting to only watch TV. Some people wanted activities, families wanted activities. So I was able to allow people to use the games for a fee and that was able that was something else that brought small amounts of of income but consistently so i think those two things were able to while it it, it kind of supported me while i was trying to innovate and doing the other larger projects because the other larger projects would never have returned on investment to me immediately i will have invest i would have planned it let's say barber hall to go which i spoke about yesterday i would have planned that but then i would have to wait uh, two months before I even get anything from that. So while that was happening, I would have depended on somebody coming on the weekend and, and taking a couple of games and, you know, giving me some, some, some income. So I would have been able to like, kind of like make it through that time period. So I think I really relate and support what was said earlier in terms of, you know, definitely having multiple streams of income. And then sometimes the, and the answers and the solutions are like with you. You know, there might be resources that you as an individual may have that you may not be tapping into, you know? So great. I want to dig deeper into the mitigation strategies and support systems. And I know you all, each of you shared a bit about that, but I want to bring Ayn back in. And Ayn, we, uh, I left you at the point where you were talking about Share Like Wire program and the kind of support that it gave you, um, you know, during the whole COVID situation. So let's talk a little, more, a little bit more about that. So some of the supports we would have had um, business consultancies, different topics would have been covered throughout the eight months period that we had. So we would have started just before COVID and then the majority of the sessions were actually virtual because of what was happening. But through the business coaching as well as even just a personal coach too. So because as one thing as well to your mindset is completely different or changed throughout this time because it's not something that we are accustomed dealing with. So it had some points in time, it just felt like you wanted to just give up, or it was like, this is not making any sense. There were a couple of months where I had no clients at all, when nothing was happening. So it just, it, it was a bit deterring at times. So I think the assistance that I got, both in terms of personal development, as well as professional assisting with capacity, and just building on an idea, was something that was really important at the time, and really did show some benefits to, to what I currently have. Um, so I think sometimes we all try to do it on our own. Uh, a team is needed. So I would have had like my interns, my partner and everything with me in terms of moving forward, uh, not just with the business, but also just ensuring to that personally and mentally and everything that we're ready to move forward with that. And even also having some of the persons that I work with currently in terms of collaboration, having them understand what it is we were going to do in terms of moving forward. So kind of having people on the same wavelength as you as well too in terms of how best to move forward during times like these it really did help yeah, and you know um on yesterday's panel we spoke about networking and collaboration and how important that is and i'm here it coming out coming out again i mean there are also we also we also have synergies on the panel people entrepreneurs knowing each other working with each other and that's awesome um and son let's talk about what you did to overcome um, okay, so yeah, I, I am familiar with actually with a few people on this panel. Not familiar, I work with them. I know Daniel, I know somebody, awesome. I know Ken. So that's just you know cool to see everybody doing their thing. You know, I support young entrepreneurs all the time. So what I did, I actually, I, I my mindset was it takes money to make money. So I actually use the downtime to invest heavily uh, within myself, my craft. I uh, built this new studio that I'm in right now. I, 
that a lot of people would have said that Anson, that's kind of crazy to take on such a big investment. But to me, this is something I always wanted to do. I just never had the time. So I use COVID as my time period to to build because I, I see 2020 as just a, a hiccup to me, a stumbling block. But at least I'll be going into 2021 a lot stronger and, uh, and uh, in uh, a space that I could actually do bigger and better. So that's one of the things that I did. I invested in this new studio. Um, I also invested in, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm going down the road of, of a producer, not in the musical sense, but um, in film. So Ken actually is on board on one of the projects that I'm working on. That is tying into that project what I have mentioned earlier where I'm putting together an alternative to mainstream media, which is going to target more the social media aspect of things. So companies that struggling to, to reach to the, the viewers at home or the kids at home or are struggling to get engagement or increase their social media presence, I'm, I'm coming up with a, a very elaborate program. I, I don't know how much of that uh, I could share because it's, it's still in the stages of um, of being new and exciting. So I don't want to give too much of that out, but it should be rolling out within the next couple of weeks, actually. So anybody who wants to get more information on that, uh, feel free to contact me on a personal note. Um, I also, as I explained to you, majority of my revenue right now is coming from streaming. So I put a lot more energy and, and resources into that. And what I just want to urge to the people are listening is, for me, the secret to success is all about like finding problems and coming up with solutions for those problems. Like, even just the notion of that helps you to think, okay, what is a good business to get into? You know, or this is a good investment to make. You just think, okay, what is a problem that we all have? And if you can come up with a solution for that problem, chances are you're gonna be able to make money from it. So the pandemic was a major problem for us all. I low key realized what is the number one um, solution to that? It is in health and wellness and safety. So I, I privately invested in companies that are bringing in things to fight against the pandemic. So. It's a problem that we all have, and that's a simple solution. That, you know, not sometimes you might think that we need to have this great idea or sit down for months to, to come up with a business plan. But in business, sometimes it's about opportunity too. And you have to see, like, you have to make the best of bad situations and see the opportunities within it and jump and act at a chance to be the first to invest in it or the first to come up with a solution. So for me, I've been, look, I've just been looking at all the problems that I have, the problems that other people have, and just figuring out ways to be innovative to solve those problems. And it, it has cost me money, but it takes money to make money. And some of those things, I may not see the, the return on this investment in this year, but definitely going into 2021, I believe I'll be in a much stronger position than a lot of people who are in the field that I'm in to handle the influx of or the resurgence of the industry, you know, it's going to be, it's, a, it's going to be a boom next year. So if you're not paying attention, you're not seeing the opportunity, I urge you right now to make the necessary changes that you need to make to be able to facilitate for when things pick back up, because it's going to be, it's going to be big. But Ansel, you know, these conversations are important here yeah? um, to keep sharing with the national community um, because, you know, having the conversation once is not enough. But let me bring Shadi in. And I know, Shadi, you spoke, you, you spoke a bit in terms of what you did to, to mitigate your challenges. But let's dig deeper into that. Hello. Oh, yes, um, I do know most of the panel as well, too interact with them at my service company. Um, what I did actually, I structure myself personally, as you said, Mr. Anderson said, structure your craft and hormones it. So 
Yes, I went into the craft as well as I made it into a visual aspect and attractive actor. So I did digital. So I try to make it to a point that literally and um, visually everything was extremely clear and crisp to the guests and the customers now. So when it, the drinks package, when they order it, they have this whole idea of teas as well as um, how it was built because I did the video as well too. So I implemented many videos included on my post on my page as well. And the staff members as well, they took the time to as well, same thing, I did my little mini training. We did our um, Zoom meetings in between or we did our uh, meetings via um, phones as well and just try to interact with every personnel too. And the menus I structured too as well to for weddings and for occasions personal. I actually allow my guests and my customers to know their dietary um, needs too as well. And I implemented more because I'm vegan and gluten-free. So I just try to structure everything to suit individualities when I do in my anything but beverage or food as well to catering for the staff member and the chefs because I do my whole networking as well. So I network as well as mean as possible. I know personal, so I put them onto a different platform. So what we did, we just worked as a team and everybody who going through the same process, we just lean on each other in a way that we'll be able to help each other because what you don't provide, I can provide, same vice versa and everybody will be able to go back with, and come back with a boom as Mr. Anderson said, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Danielle, you also shared a lot of what you did to, um, to beat the COVID challenges, but tell us more about that. I mean, in terms of your continuity plan. Yeah, so luckily for me, and, and I know we're talking about money investment, but I put a heavy weight on investing in yourself. So I'm a firm believer in you need to be learning something every single day. So I push, you know, reading a lot, investing in courses that teach you because even when it comes to money, you still need to understand how it works for you to actually put the money in or pay the person to help you invest and save, right? So when I wrote the book that year, just so happened, I was on a, on a road trying to read like 52 books for the year, book a week. Um, I, I came up a little bit short, but within those books, I learned so much and grew so much. And what it really helped me to do was to connect the dots and, and give me more options so that when I wrote the book, it was, I had a plan that it wouldn't just be a book, right? When the book was launched, I, I would create a, a self-help course that goes along with the book, which actually launched, I think it was like two months ago. And funny enough, again, um, I did it in Ken's studio. So connecting with... Wow. Book. Yeah, we actually just did the last session last week. And, you know, it, I did it live. Persons who bought the book, they read the chapter, they got a guidebook, they, they got the, the, the personal help. And through Ken as well, I, I recorded it and packaged it as an online digital course. Because again, we're in the COVID time, it's, it's easier for people to consume something via the digital platform, right? And that connection is something that I really try to push with everything I do. I don't like to just do one thing and then that's it. It needs to have some kind of after effect. It needs to be connected to something and it needs to pull along something. Um, kind of going to the company that I created, which is called One Momentum. I'm all about creating that momentum that continues along the path. And funny enough, my book created a new path for me that I did not intend because from writing it and getting feedback from persons and, and getting, you know, a thousand books sold and, and the success with the courses, I realized that I really do enjoy writing books. I, 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 I love hearing people's feedback on what's going on in their lives. And it's, it showed me that there are different avenues for what people need. One I realized is that there are a lot of talented people in Trinidad and Tobago and in the, in the Caribbean in general, who want to write books, who want to create, and they don't know how to do it. And I know how much stress I went through to figure out how to do all of this. Like, I'm not kidding mm. you. I had to read so many books, do watch so many videos, slide in the DMs of so many people just to understand things that should be readily available. Mm. And that showed me that this is, there's a need. So a portion of my business is going to be uh, focused on educating people on how you could self-publish, how you could find a publisher. What, what are the actual tangible things that you can do here in the Caribbean? Because we, we focus so much on outside and Amazon and what, what international people are doing. We forget that there's so much you can do here 
and build out from that. And that's what I want to show people because that's what I did, right? And, you know, it puts any title of author, entrepreneur, I, I, it, it, it's, it's helped me to kind of create a new level of discipline because um, you don't go into the realizing that you have to write every single day. You have to read every single day. It, it is, <laughs> it does take a lot of discipline, but it does transfer over into a lot of things. So, you know, when it comes to business, when it comes to networking, it's, it's always about adding that drop into the bucket until your bucket is filled. And, you know, I'm taking the experiences I learned from 2020 because I don't see 2020 as a feel. I see it as the launching um, pad for me um, and using that in all the further things I'll be doing when I create more books in the Millennial Mind series. I actually finished the manuscript for the next one that's going to be launching next year, April and creating systems and books and videos around the aspect of educating people on writing books for Caribbean audiences as well. So uh, there's a lot to do and I'm excited to do it. And I love what you, what you said, Daniel, in terms of um, the writing of the book, because my own experience publishing my book three years ago, the, just a strong networking team right here is what helped me. It's right here in, in Trinidad and Tobago. But you just need to find it and get the support system. Let me bring Ken in because Ken seems to be a strong support system for the team yesterday and today. All right. Um, so, yeah, I like being that support system, but I'm actually going to talk about some of these struggles. Now, um, everybody, you know, gives you all you see. You know, what you see is usually a nice part, right? So you see you pull up a nice little picture and you pose in or you see, you know, um, the episode comes out or whatever it is we're doing is, is released. But what you don't see is the time when Ken and Daniel were doing the live. Everything went good the first two sessions and then the third session, we had no idea what went wrong and everything was malfunctioning because it's technology you work on. What you don't see is when Ken and Daniel sat with a particular platform and this time I'm thinking it's my equipment, but then the platform was actually what was giving trouble. And we just had no idea. And I'm just saying, well, hmm, boy, Dan, I'm going to stop talking to me because nothing working here. You know, see, so Daniel, you see Daniel's in stitches, eh? No, but this is true. It's true story. True story. True story. You know, um, so I think this is something very important to mention. You know, a lot of these things I didn't know. Like, I mean, yeah, I went and study, you know, uh, this whole heap of degrees, but none of my degrees, they had a course that said, this is how to do live, you know, during COVID, you know, I, I literally didn't know. I had to work with other people, learn, and then sometimes it would go good. And then, of course, technology would give you the hiccups. I actually changed my internet provider. Right now, I have two internet providers, you know, just to give a more reliable service due to hiccups in the past. So it's something I want to say definitely for me personally, as I come out of my comfort zone. Let me say, tell you how serious it is with coming out of my comfort zone. So um, I would have always done video. So even before... I would have been shooting video while I was doing my other ventures. And I printed a jersey that said, I am not a photographer. Because usually when I'm shooting video, um, people will come and they'll pose for a picture. So I want to let them know, like, this is not what I'm doing. I'm doing video today. However, um, COVID-19 arrived and I have all this photography equipment, right? So I have to become a photographer to the point where um, I started to work for Angostura and I assisted them in launching a lot of their project, pro products. So, for example, Angostura launched White to Watermelon. So I was able to do um, photos for it, as in me taking the photos. Um, I came up with an entire new methodology through research and looking through Pinterest and so on. A new style of photography that I didn't see done often in Trinidad. And a lot of my work has been published in the local newspapers and is consistently used by their... Um, international communication team because I did work for their, they launched a couple of products. Um, they launched um, the new bitters as well, um, uh, uh, chocolate bitters. So, so I, that was me stepping out of my comfort zone, me stepping out into an arena that I usually wouldn't do. Even me doing video now, usually I would have a staff. Like I'm in my office, I have different stations around. I have about four or five stations there. Anybody that knows me, you will visit and it will always have like three, four people, you know, working in the office since COVID-19 is me alone, you know. So I had to figure out ways to work with people remotely. You know, I had to buy, if it's one drive, I had to buy three, four drives. We're working on a project. You have to put the project on each drive. So I kind of wanted to, to talk a bit about that part of it because I feel like that's a part that a lot of people don't talk about and people don't see. They just see, ah, Manson, boy, he really getting through there, boy. You know, you don't see any time when Ken's in the studio arguing because Ken's saying, 
boy answering is what I need from you and answering say no is what I need from you. You're not saying that, you know. So I think that's something that I want to share and I want to let people know. It's not going to be easy, you know, sometimes. And even for me, it's something that I am discovering as I go. I, I have to kind of, I'm accustomed to having staff and telling them what to do and giving them deliverables. And now I have to do a lot of the work myself. And then I have to still balance my ventures mm -hmm. because my ventures is what supporting my equipment. You know, now I can't fly out to purchase stuff. So that means all of my equipment costs going up. But then people don't have as much money. So the payments going down, right? <laughs> so then, so, so I think I wanted to, I really want to share, like, you know, you had to come out of your comfort zone. Sometimes you had to, you know, make the tough decisions. I had to do a lot of apologizing, telling people, look, sorry, you know, I thought this was going to happen, but it didn't, you know, and it's really because this is just new for all of us. So I think that really is my contribution now, you know, you just had to kind of take, take it one step at a time and try your best to keep, keep the ball rolling and just do your best to, to um, put your best foot forward as often as you can. But just before we wrap, I will give each of you 30 seconds to leave one piece of advice for young entrepreneurs or persons who wish to become an entrepreneur um, in terms of your experience and particularly the whole COVID journey and, and how you mitigate it. Let me start with Anson, 30 seconds. Okay, um, so... Oof, 30 seconds. All right. So for me, sometimes in life, you might think that you have it all figured out and you reach this place where, okay, I'm comfortable um, working as an engineer for an oil company, for example. And then, boom, the industry is hit and it's hit very hard and then they are laying off workers. So for me, what I would leave you with is do ever be comfortable do ever feel like you reached a place in life where i could just sit back and relax because i'll tell you this there's there's hundreds of other hungry people they might be hungrier than you who up and coming who innovating and who studying and bettering themselves and, and improving every day and there's gonna come a day where they'll be challenging you for that spot so what I'm saying is, is not really a competition, but it's more of a wake up call for you. Do feel comfortable in what you're doing now. Always strive to do better. Always strive to see how to innovate and change. And you have to learn to read what's happening around you. You know, just watch the news, read the papers. You know, all these things, it, they affect business and they affect your, your income, your potential earnings, you know? So for me, I was that person working in Slumberjee like four years ago as a, a very good oil and gas service provider. It's a very good company, made a lot of money, but guess what? The oil and gas industry got hit very hard. But fortunately for me, I foresaw this happening and I made the switch about four years ago. So a lot of my cool workers or past co-workers they call me and they're like yo we don't have anything to do you have anything for me to get involved with is because i saw that shift happening and i just made the transition into what i'm doing now so i, I haven't been affected the same way they were and, and i say this so that if there's any young people listening you might have gone to school for four or five years to do your degree your master's your bachelor's and you think, okay, I have a, a secure job that pay me the kind of figures that mommy and daddy will be proud of. But guess what? We live in a real world where natural disasters happen, pandemics happen, economies fail, oil reserves run out. So don't be comfortable. Always look, always innovate. Always try to have multiple sources of income. And for as much as you can, try to earn foreign currencies. It can't go wrong with that. And I think that that gem right there, I wish I had a meet to tell me this but eight years ago. You know, yeah. I'd probably be in a much better position. But that's the that's gem that I'll leave in your way. Great. I? Um, one thing, especially for those just starting off to just keep going. I know now a lot of people are thinking this is not the right time to start a business or get into it. Oh. Uh, innovation and creativity is what is needed of right now. People are looking for new things, different things, something unique. So whatever idea you have, just keep going. Find a team, keep going, and just keep pushing forward. Because I think we, you think in that year 2020, mashed up everything for everyone. 
it just made us all stronger and it made you open your eyes to, to see what is really needed out there and what people are looking for and what people are kind of geared towards. So just kind of keep going, keep pushing. Eventually, whatever it is you're aiming to do, you will get through. Love it. Daniel? Uh, so for me, the only thing that keeps coming in my mind is actually a video I posted this morning uh, where I, you know, they're saying um, champagne taste but more be money. Basically, I made a twist to that and I said, million dollar goals, but $5 mindset, right? And I think to me, the most important thing is mindset and the state that you can maintain. Because if you're in a state where you should be doing things and you could, do, oh, you're not hearing me? I see Anson doing something. Yes, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs start off in a position where they could be doing these things and they set their bar very low, but you need to get in a position where it's a must where you must show up, where you must succeed, where you must hit your targets. And you will learn to do these things by saying, okay, I have to invest in myself. I have to, these goals I have, it needs to match my effort. It needs to match my self-investment. It needs to match the people within my network. And until you are in that position or you feel like you're getting close to it, it's always, it should, you should always be in a must mode. I must achieve. Um, because that's the difference between you staying uh, the struggle phase, no matter the environment, and you actually starting to see the success you want. Wonderfully said, Ken. Right. I would say um, have an open mind, um, and it will possibly involve doing things that you may be uncomfortable with or you're not accustomed to doing. And I would also say stay humble. I think COVID has been a very humbling experience for me. Um, I would have been accustomed to traveling for the entire year and having huge events, having like a big staff now to like me doing a lot of the work myself. And I think I'm not upset about that because now personally I've been able to develop a, a lot of different crafts. So definitely um, come out of your comfort zone and do things that you may think, just as Anson was saying, you know, okay, I had a big master's, right? But I'm doing photography, you know, I never studied that. Um, but I think it still helps and also be humble. Don't be afraid to apologize. Don't be afraid to say, look, I was wrong. I will try again better next time because you would learn from the experience and you will be better moving forward. Great, Shadi. Yes, same thing. Be humble and basically be humble to your craft itself too. What we could do for ourselves when you start up your own business, just know what you're passionate about. You have to be focused and literally do your research and structure yourself. You have to change your mindset, as I said, too, as well. So main thing of all, we have to be able to uh, communicate the social media as well, too, and use the platforms to guide us along. Not to only use it to generate for other person, but be the brand itself, too, and be the person you wish and you wish to uh, communicate other persons in your staff or in the region. Don't keep it at home as well too. Just be a sponge, absorb as much as possible and release as much as possible to persons as well too. So you can learn as well as teach too as well and it will fluctuate. That's how a company go, right? Business always triples down. So I hope everybody, thank you so much for your time and hopefully you enjoy it, okay?